What's up, guys? I'm back. Just got back last night from Aruba. Me and my wife went on a much deserved vacation in the Caribbean. Six days in Aruba, basically of nothing but the pool, the beach, and a lot of drinking and eating some good food and relaxation. My wife, God bless, had a rough year with the pandemic because she had to shut down her salon for over three months. It was very stressful. Reopening was very stressful. So, uh, one day she comes home and she goes, we're going to Aruba. And that's one benefit of having a wife that works. I mean, I had to get used to it. I'm not going to lie. I had to get used to it. But she does sometimes come home and go, yeah, we're going on vacation. And uh, I, like I said, I had to get used to it because I was always brought up to be the breadwinner. But uh, once you get used to it and you know that you treat each other with respect, it's pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. So we went to Aruba and we had a great time. If you ever go, if you've had the chance to go, go. The beaches are absolutely beautiful. The people are super friendly. The crime rate is extremely low. You're totally safe walking on the streets. Um, and the resorts are beautiful. And there's gambling on top of that, which is uh, fun. But I'm back. And we are gonna do a new video. So last topic we did was the overbearing mothers. So today's topic is going to be tyrannical fathers. So what do I mean, what do I mean by tyrannical fathers? Well, by the strictest definition, tyrannical fathers from Freud, he believed that a father sometimes resented his child for taking away the attention from his wife. So it was, he believed that it came from the child getting 100% of the attention from his now wife and the resentment for it. Now, that seems to be not really the case, right? It's like the reverse of the edible, eatable mother, if you will. That's really not the case so much. Although there are tyrannical, dominant, narcissistic fathers out there. So my question when I first wanted to do this video was what makes a tyrannical father? What makes a human being act like this. So when we say tyrannical father, what you and I think of is a father that no matter what he does, it's always right. And no matter what the son does or the daughter, but usually it's the ones that suffer the most from this is the, is the son because tyrannical fathers usually come down hardest on their sons or sons. Um, they demand constant respect. Nothing their son does is good enough. They never show emotion. Nothing will ever live up to their son having any kind of success, if you will, in the eyes of his father no matter what, from day one till the day he dies, you're never good enough. And you're spoken to like a child and a boy, and you're treated like no matter what you do is never good enough. And you better respect me, God damn it, no matter what. That's usually what we think of. Now, let me fix this light because I got a bald head and this fucking thing is like, reflecting off my head. So I'm going to fix this light a little bit. Ooh, no, the other, the other way. Okay. Fix the light a little bit. There we go. Much better. And now we don't get a reflection off my bald fucking head. Anyway. Okay. So 
basically, that type of father in the United States, in the Western world, doesn't exist much anymore. Un they're out there. They're just not as many as it used to be. And certainly not as many as overbearing mothers. Overbearing mothers are on the rise, whereas tyrannical fathers are in that aspect on, on the drop. A lot of times, those type of tyrannical fathers that I just described, they usually come from another culture, a culture that has that traditional sense of the father rules the roost and no matter what. So they come from the Middle East and they relocate, or they come from some parts of Asia and they re relocate. Maybe certain parts of the Spanish culture, but more so seems like the Middle East, uh, Asian, Indian, that kind of, that's where you kind of find it today. Um, but, you know, when we think of that, we think of fathers from the Great Depression, right? Who made their living and busted their butt and their wife stayed home and you're going to respect me, God damn it. I'm the one that puts food in your belly. I'm the one that puts a roof over your head. And what was made so famous by the movie Fences, or the play Fences, rather, and then they made it into a movie, was as long as you address me, you put a sir on the end of that. Now, there are other... There's another type of tyrannical father that is more common today, but he, he's the narcissistic father. He's the father that micromanages his son in every aspect that he does, but no matter what his son does, is never good enough. And his experiences overshadow everything. They are overblown. You're never going to be. So, for example, there was a great uh, documentary made in 2013 called Trophy Kids. Matter of fact, I'll put a link at the bottom of this video of the trailer. And if you really want to watch it and learn about it, it's really interesting. And kind of sad at the same time. So there are these fathers that put their kids in sports and they micromanage these kids so much and they put so much pressure on these kids that these kids actually, even if they're talented, underperform because they're on so much pressure. And no matter how good they do, it's never good enough for the father. And usually they're reliving their own past through their kid. Like it's a there was like one guy who was a football player and never made it into pros and he drills his son like nobody's business. And this kid, by the time he's in high school, wants nothing to do with football. And he just does it because his father demands that he does it. There's another one where the father is putting her daughter through golf and she's actually extremely talented golf player. Um, but it's just never good enough. And as a matter of fact, at the end of the documentary, I haven't seen it in a while, but I do remember this. If the father was present and the girl was playing golf, she always underachieved because she was on so much stress to trying to perform for her father. And the father was never, nothing was ever good enough, no matter how she did. But at the end, she actually went to a golf tournament without her father and she won the whole thing because she was that talented, but now she had no stress. It's a tremendous documentary. So today, if you think about tyrannical fathers, dominant father, narcissist, that's usually in the American way. That's usually the angle that it goes. Um, great documentary. Like I said, I'll put the link underneath. Great documentary. But the where do these fathers, like, how do these fathers become tyrannical or narcissistic? Well, there's a, a couple of ways, right? Um, it could be their father was extremely tyrannical, extremely dominant, uh, maybe so much so that it became physical abuse. And they're actually, they actually think they're getting, their kids get it so much better because I don't put my hands on you. But the emotional and verbal and mental abuse that they put these kids through, they don't even think of anything. There's a great scene in the movie Fences 
with Denzel Washington. He was also did the, also the play, but he did the movie. And he's tell, talking to his friends about how his father beat him because he caught him making out with his girlfriend. So Denzel is, is a teenager. He is telling a story about he how he's getting on with his girlfriend as a teenager. Father catches him. The father basically chases him away. And he, the father wants to have his way with the girlfriend. And this enraged him so much that he fought, this is the first time he fought back from his father. But his father beat him so bad, he said that he woke up to his dog looking in his face. He couldn't see out of his eyes because his eyes were swollen shut. And he actually left home because of this incident. And of course, when I do no justice telling the story as the great Denzel Washington does. So when Denzel is raising his son, he doesn't beat him, but he kind of resents him a bit because it's like, you got it good, but he doesn't let him know he's got it good. He lets him know the only reason you got this good is because of me. And I put food in your belly and a roof over your house and God damn it, you're going to respect me, but nothing was ever good enough for me. Great movie, great play. Anyway, that's could be where it comes from. Then the other way would be narcissism. Now, the biggest problem is how do these kids turn out? So they usually go in one or two directions. The most common direction that people think those kids go into is the direction of not respecting authority, becoming violent themselves, having problems with police, um, acting out like that. And that does happen. What also happens just as much and sometimes even more is somebody that is so afraid of conflict, somebody that's so afraid to get into any kind of argument or conflict, they bury it. They bury it and bury it and bury it. And their whole life, they're kind of like scared puppies. No matter what happens, they refuse to get into any kind of conflict with anybody. And that's that you need to have that hostility in you. It just has to be controlled. You need to have that anger at times because people are going to walk all over you. And especially if they see that you're not going to fight back or you're going to let them, oh, they'll just push you right out of the way. They'll do it in relationships. They'll do it in your career, corporations. I mean, just they, they'll just push you right out of They'll make you sign. If you want to buy a new car, those salesmen, they'll come in like that, like sharks. Oh, this guy, we got him. And they will literally just knock you out of the way as if you don't even exist. And then you kind of are doing everything not to be confrontational because you don't want to be like your father. Who the hell wants to be like my father? Because at, the, at such an early age, confrontation was instilled in you, but it was instilled in a terrible, terrible way. So both, both people can be both types of people that turn out like this, or sometimes there's a, there's a combination of both, but both people that turn out like, and I'll explain how it's a combination of both, both people that turn out like this become, um, they can't have good relationships and if they do, they turn out to marry or go into a relationship. Somebody just like their father, somebody emotionally unavailable, somebody narcissistic, somebody dominant, somebody um, that takes advantage of them um, because that's what they think they deserve. They don't think they deserve any kind of love, even if their mother gave them some love, right? Because you, you go to your father for... Um, any kind of life experience, right? You want to know that he believes in you, right? You go to him, you look to him and hope that he has approval over you, right? You're looking for that thumbs up. If you have, if you grow up with the right father, he will discipline you, but he, when you do right, he gives you that thumbs up. Because the role of a father is to discipline you, 
but he's his role is to also raise a responsible human being that could do things on his own. So you do instill discipline, but at the same time, you reward him when he does things on his own and he becomes, uh, come, starts coming into his own. He graduates high school. If he scores a touchdown, if something you teach him, he brings to fruition. Uh, he gets married. He has children of his own. and He looks to his father for approval. And if you have that father that never, nothing is good enough. Then you never get that approval and you never think you deserve approval. So you turn out to marry someone just like your own. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I'm gonna say that more men become passive than aggressive with a type of father like that. I might be wrong, but from the little bit of research I did on this, that seems to be where it's at, right? So some, then I say sometimes it's a combination. So this is how it's a combination. That person that is passive, that wants nothing to do with confrontation, every time somebody takes advantage of him, it's repressed, it's repressed, it's repressed, it's repressed. So he doesn't want to face it. And then one day, now this is the extreme, but it does happen. One day, you get a mass shooting. That lone killer can be a result of a tyrannical father because all that anger is repressed and it just comes out. And Jordan Peterson says it, says it the best. He's also a tremendous psychologist. He says, anytime you see one of those lone killers and they interview a neighbor, they say, oh, he was such a nice man. He would never hurt a fly. He was just, well, yeah. And the problem is he didn't hurt any flies in his life. He didn't release that anger. And then it just all piled up and boom, it happens. It is extremely important that when you take on parenthood, you understand the results. I think 90% of the people that take on parenthood do. And I truly believe that the majority of them are doing their best, their best. And they're always just basically looking out for you. Like for example, I'm a blue collar guy. My father did not want me to be a blue collar guy. He wanted me to go to school. He wanted me to go to college and he wanted me to be a white collar worker. He used to say to me, as I was a kid, I was in the 1980s. He's sitting in a picture in the eighties, right? He'd say to me, John, go to law school. The shittiest lawyer in the world makes a hundred thousand dollars a year. Meanwhile, he was an electrician, right? But he said, I want better for my kid. And I did go to school and I did get that corporate job, but I fucking hated every second of that corporate job. I hated it. And my father passed and probably because he passed is when I chose the route that made me happy. The blue collar route. I went to an apprenticeship for an electrician and went to work for my brothers. I was been happy ever since with my career choices ever since then. But whether it's unconsciously or deliberately, I did wait for my father to pass before I made that decision. Until this day, I still have dreams. And I remember this one particular dream I had where I was on my way to work, working in the corporate world. I used to work for uh, Deutsche Bank. And I was on my way to work and I was late and there was a subway and I was trying to get on the subway because I used to work in New York City. And I see my father and my brother, and he's in the subway. Now, my brother always worked for my father, and then he started his own electrical contracting business, right? And those, and my father and my brothers were the, the men I always looked up to. And I remember I was running late, and I see my father, and I just grab him in the dream. That's obviously after he passed. And I said, Dad, can I please just be an electrician? And I'm just begging for his approval in the dream to let me be what I want to be. I could only imagine what those sons and daughters go through with having a father as a tyrannical, dominant, narcissistic father. I could only imagine the therapy they need and the fixing that's going to happen in order for them to be a well-balanced human being. 
It's sad, but it's true. And it's fascinating. So you know how I like to put movie clips at the end if it ties everything together. Well, I'm going to put a clip of the play, Fences, not the movie. The reason why I'm putting the play is James Earl Jones plays the tyrannical father. And even though as great as Denzel Washington is, there's something about James Earl Jones when he plays this role really brings it home. And in this scene, his son comes to him and his son is petrified, but his son decides, I am going to figure this out, why my father is like this. But obviously being a young boy, like a teenager, he thinks it's him that's the problem. And he says to his father, how come you never liked me? And the kid is petrified. He's facing his worst fears, but he is shaking shaking because he's so petrified he's so frightened of his father so i'm going to show that clip and it's tremendous tre the job that james earl jones does like i said no disrespect to denzel denzel's my man he's a great actor james earl jones a little bit better just saying it's my opinion that's why i'm putting that one at the end of this video all right guys i right, listen subscribe comment send this to anybody you think, share it. Uh, and, I, and I appreciate the small following that's growing. I do, because I enjoy doing this. And if the channel wasn't growing, even though it's growing slowly, I wouldn't do it. But I'm glad that it is. And I appreciate my 127 subscribers. And uh, so thank you. And I'm gonna keep making videos as long as my subscriptions are going up. And I have some really cool interviews coming up. One of which I'm not going to say yet, but it is a biggie. And I got to thank my brother Dominic for that one because he's the one that set it up. Um, but it's a good one. All right, guys. See you soon. Bye. A memorable scene by James Earl Jones as a stern father who has struggled to build a life and keep control of his family shows him teaching his son a painful lesson about setting his expectations for affection. Can I ask you a question? What the hell you wanna ask me? Mrs. Wiki is the one you got the questions for. How come you ain't never liked me? Liked you? Who in the hell ever said, I got to like you? What law is there to say, I got to like you? Do you want to stand up in my face and ask me some damn fool ass question like that? Talk about liking somebody. Come here, boy, when I talk to you. Straighten up, goddammit. I asked you a question. What law is there to say, I got to like you? None. All right, then. Don't you eat every day? Answer me. When I talk to you, don't you eat every day? Yeah. Nigga, as long as you live in my house, you put a sir on the end of it when you talk to me. Yes, sir. You eat every day. Yes, sir. Got a roof over your head. Yes, sir. And clothes on your back. Yes, sir. Why do you think that is? Because of you. Hell, I know it's because of me. Why do you think that is? Because you like me? Like you. I go out of here every morning and bust my butt putting up with them crackers all day long because I like you. You is the biggest fool I ever saw. It is my job. It is my responsibility. You understand that? A man got to take care of his family. You live in my house. You sleep your behind on my bedclothes. You put my food in your belly because you are my son. You are my flesh and blood, not because I like you. It is my duty to take care of you. I owe a responsibility to you. Wait now. Let's get this straight right now. We'll go along any further. I ain't got to like you. Mr. Rand, don't give me my money come payday because he liked me. He give me because he owe me. Now, I didn't give you everything I had to give you. I gave you your life. Your mama and me worked it out between us. And lacking your black ass was not a part of the bargain. And don't you try and go through life worried if somebody like you or not. You best make sure that they are doing right by you. 
You understand what I'm saying, boy? Yes, sir. Then you get the hell out of my face and go on down under A&P.